You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Trick or treat, Lone Star Radio listeners. This is Dick, the general manager, taking this quick moment to remind you that Lone Star Community Radio is looking to fill some of our talk show slots along with some of our DJ slots. We have a new show airing on the 10th, Making Connections with Stacey Harris, which will air every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Make sure to check it out along with our other programs on Lone Star Community Radio. More information on Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. And again, if you're interested in doing something with us, Call the station, 936-647-3776. Thanks for checking out this recording, and I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, and good afternoon. You're listening to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. Uh, We are broadcasting from... Uh, lovely downtown Conroe on one of the more beautiful days here in the north of Houston. Um, we are you're listening on uh, either live 104.5 and 106.1, or you're if you're screaming down I-45 right now north of Houston. When you get landed, you can start streaming us live at irlonestar.com. Again, I am Ted Cox, and this is the Good News Program. Um, it's always good to to. Uh, Kind of revisit and remind uh, everyone who's listening what the show's all about, and I think certainly what you will hear today with my uh, two guests uh, is exactly the show's premise. Uh, when we first launched the show just a couple of months ago, we set out to be just a couple of hours. This is uh, on Thursday afternoons. We're broadcasting live, so if you're picking this up on on one of our podcasts or on YouTube, you know this is not a Thursday. But as we broadcast live for just a couple of hours on a Thursday afternoon, the intent of the show uh, was to have folks on uh, from the community, from the surrounding area, uh, who are just ordinary folks like you and me, uh, but that they're doing extraordinary things in the community. They're doing good things in the community. And it was basically to try to be just a respite for a couple of hours uh, where we're just bombarded with bad news. If you watch any of the cable shows or any of the news shows or any of the news in the evenings or any talk shows, anything like that, you know that we're just bombarded with bad news and we just seem to be at each other's throat. So this is an intent uh, to just take a couple of moments, take a couple hours, uh, and talk with folks that are that are really doing good things in the community. And, that, and that's the intent of the show. Uh, and today, uh, hopefully, as you will hear, uh, it is no exception. So in studio, uh, I have uh, Kelly Martins. Uh, say hello, Kelly. Hi, thank uh, you. You're welcome. Uh, so Kelly has got a very uh, interesting story, uh, and the intent for having her on was not just to tell the story and how she uh, ended up doing what she's doing, uh, but also to tell us some stories of both success and maybe some things that were uh, not so uh, pleasant to talk about, but what she's doing and the other people who are coming around her. I won't steal any of her story. Uh, and then, of course, as as we try to do each time, whether we're talking about foster care or uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey for those who are less privileged on how to get legal help, uh, or um, uh, Marquise Taylor, who we had on just a couple of weeks ago, who who basically went to the different shelters and lifted people's spirits through song. Not only are the stories are, that are important of the individual that we have in the, in the studio, but the stories of the lives affected are also very important. But invariably, there's some help that they need, either time or resources or whatever. So, so beyond just the story, we also, for those who are listening, who want uh, to take part in the, in the effort that you're going to be hearing about, we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to to give or to serve in ways that they uh, that they need, and so um, once we work our way through the story, uh, you will see at the end of the show, uh, I will post the information uh, that Kelly imparts to us and the way she wants to have communicated, and I'll I'll post that on our Facebook page. And the Facebook page is as you go to Facebook, it's the Good News Program. So you go to Facebook forward slash Good News Program, and you'll find it, and you'll find all of the stories locations, uh, links, uh, 
donations, whatever it happens to be that we're going to talk about, you'll find all that information there. So you don't have to try to capture it uh, if you're listening in your cars. So with that uh, prep, with sort of the setting of the table, I guess we'll begin to have the meal now. So Kelly, tell us, say hello and tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and um, and then we'll kind of work our way into sort of how you found yourself into the location that you're in. Okay, yes. Uh, Thank you for having me on today. Uh, I live in Tomball, so not far from here. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, two kids at home. Uh, My husband works here in Houston. Um, Homeschool one and the other is in uh, Salem Lutheran. So uh, I was just wondering how I could make a difference in other kids' lives. One day I read an article and um, it was talking about another school and I just I realized that being a stay-at-home mom, these other kids could use a mentor and okay. it led me to research how we could help. Okay, so just and, and for, for those, uh, I think I've described a couple of times that uh, in the off-air times, uh, I teach at a couple of different places and one is a, a homeschool co-op uh, and I just so happen to have Kelly's son in my class. So... <laughs> So that's how we, uh, beyond that, that's how we met each other. Bless and, you. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Chris, if you're listening, do your homework. <laughs> um, okay, so, so uh, continue on. So, you were, uh, so you're a stay-at-home mom, uh, and, uh, and you, you began to wonder. So I was so tell us about the story scrolling Facebook, and, okay. you know, as we do, and yes. a friend of mine had posted an article. Their children were at Concordia Lutheran, and it said, don't judge the score don't judge the boys by the score and Mm. talking about the other school that Concordia had beat significantly. And at the time I really didn't care because we didn't go to Concordia and whatnot. So I just kind of scrolled through and for some reason I know God wanted me to go back to it because several days later I kept thinking about it. I went back to the article and read it and it was really a detailed story about the coach there and and what he does for those kids and how bad the school district is. Not the school district, the community, the school sits Mm. in. And when I did more research, I realized it's the number one most dangerous neighborhood in Texas and the second most dangerous neighborhood in the nation. Is, this is where Concordia? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Concordia is, uh, Concordia is right 20. here. Yes. And Tom Tom okay. It's the school they played. And it was gotcha. Worthing okay. High School. Okay. And Worthing High School sits in Sunnyside, which okay. is the neighborhood. Okay. And so I just made a note in my head, you know, I thought, well, why doesn't anyone mentor these kids? And then I realized, well, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So that's when I got a team together and we started going over. Okay. So so this was an article about Concordia who was playing this other school in football mm-hmm. or was it basketball? It was school? a football game. So it was a football game. Uh, Concordia won. Mm-hmm. It sounds like by the nature of the article, significant. probably significant. Yes. Uh, and that the coach, and you're saying the coach of the other school. At Worthing High School. Is saying, wait a minute, you, you, you can't look at the score on a, score, on a, on a sporting event and judge no, judge actually, somebody from Concordia said, let's not judge these guys gotcha. by the score and, okay. and posted the article about the coach. Uh-huh. And so when I read about the coach, that's how I found out. Okay. And so what was, can you tell us a little bit about the article about the coach? You don't have to well, the coach that. just basically talks about how these kids come from single, you know, parents, okay. parent homes. Most of them grandparents or aunts or some of them are fostered, siblings raising them. And there's just not a lot of structure. Okay. And so keeping them in school altogether is a is a big task. Okay. Yeah, just simply showing yes. up. Just having them each come to day. school. Yes, which is a huge problem they have in that school. Okay. Uh, so so you read the article. <clears throat> Excuse me. You um you saw the score, you read about the coach and you said I said, this is something I can do? Or you no, felt? Okay. I didn't think I could do anything. <laughs> well, um, I have the benefit of hearing your story before, so, yeah, I, I'm, so I'm somewhat joking a little bit because no, I, did not. I, I know the resistance. <laughs> in fact, I said, why do I care? I live in Tomball. This ah, is so far away. And, okay. And what could I do anyway, right? I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have nothing to offer. But I just knew I was supposed to do something. Right. So I um, went to some of our people at our church. Okay. Um, and said, you know, do y'all have any ideas? And we all just kind of floundered around thinking about it. And Ken Freeman, he's a speaker who speaks to youth, uh-huh. showed up at our school, at our church that Sunday. Okay. And I just, I would like to say I approached him, but I pretty much cornered him when he went to the table. <laughs> and I just, I just threw it out there really quick and said, this is the most dangerous neighborhood in Texas. This is, you know, gave it to him. And he said, if you can book that, I'll go for free. Okay. And so that's how we got in the door. Okay. <clears throat> so, so you read the article. 
there was something in you that bubbled up and said, maybe there's something I can do or maybe something I should do. Right. So uh, I don't doubt that people uh, who might be listening either live or or later on the podcast uh, may have a similar feeling, a similar inkling, a similar sort of pull. Uh, I mean, so what, what advice would you give them uh, on trying to verify whether or not they should do it? Because we can certainly talk ourselves out of things really, really, really easily. So what was kind of the process or advice that you may give to somebody else maybe reading a similar article about a similar situation? They go, well, I can't. And they list two dozen things why they can't, right? I well, when don't have you can't the time, sleep. don't have the money, I don't have the da-da-da-da-da-da-da. When you can't sleep at night okay. and all you think about are kids you've never even met. Right. And, and you know that you're supposed to do something. I mean, when the wheel started turning. As soon okay. as I read the article, it was like, okay, well, we mission all over the world. Right. Why do we not mission 36 miles down the road? Right, right. And, I, and so that's what it was for me. I just thought, well, gosh, if we're willing to jump on a plane and fly wherever, right. surely I can get in my car and go, you know, 45 south, 36 miles. Right, right. And um, like I said, I, I couldn't sleep. I mean, I dwelled on how to help the kids. Okay. And so about generally, how long was it from the time that you read the article, you read, perhaps read it a second time, had the the sort of let me ask a couple of folks around church and Ken uh, is it Ken mm-hmm. Freeman, is right? uh-huh. okay and about how long was that process was a couple that of months. Um, okay so a yeah, couple of months, months that you were you were let's say wrestling with it or trying to get my foot in the door it's a school okay so you have to follow all the you know protocol chain of commands and uh, when Ken Freeman went in so your first visit into the school was with Ken mm-hmm. okay. And I thought that'd be my last. I had no intention of going back. I mean, what did I really have to offer these people, right? Okay, okay. And, and so was, who is Ken for those who might not be Ken Freeman, is a, he speaks to youth, and he has a, a very significant background in, in his raising. Not, I think he had nine stepfathers. or Whoa, He okay. had drug abuse and tried to commit suicide by the age of 12. Or I mean, he's just a very uh, hard growing up background and a a friend invited him to church when he was in high school Okay, and he gave his life to the Lord in high school. And he's been t- talking to kids ever since. And he, he's in his sixties now. Okay. So that's what okay. he does. He travels all over the nation. Uh, and so he was, he was not part of your church, but was there speaking to, he was speaking to the in our youth. youth and about a thousand kids had showed up just to hear what he said at our wow. church. And okay. we love Ken Freeman when he's there, everyone runs to listen. Okay. And okay. I thought what a stretch for me to ask this, but he offered it and um, he'll actually be there November 16th. Okay. Not worthing this year. Yeah. Okay. And when we showed up with him, I had bought his book and gave it to the staff. We took him to lunch is how I introduced myself to him. I said, if y'all can meet for lunch, love to talk with y'all. I just kind of told him, this is what I got. This gentleman's willing to come. And they said, we'll take whatever. These kids are hurting over here. I said, sure. And so we showed up with Ken Freeman and, uh, he, he did say it was the toughest crowd he's ever talked yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. Um, they told me maybe 10 kids would stay after school to hear what he said after school. We do two presentations during the day, and then after school we stay. And I said, well, 10 kids doesn't seem like very much. And I was bringing pizza for everyone who stayed. Yeah. And he said, well, 10, okay. 10 will be a stretch. 150 kids stayed that wow. day. And 100 of them asked to know Jesus. Wow. Well, let's pick up on that. We, we are going to uh, take a short break. Uh, so uh, and when we get back, let's pick up on that story and see how it's uh, continued to evolve. Uh, you're listening to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Hey, guys. I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3. And check out our website, nerdthugradio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question, comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. 
Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. And welcome back to the Good News Program. We're broadcasting on IRLoneStar.com. We are the Lone Star Community Radio, broadcasting on 104.5-106.1. If you're traveling in your car and you want to hear the balance of the show as you get landed or want to hear the whole show again, you can listen on IR Lone Star. uh, Download the app. Uh, You can also follow us on Facebook, which has links to our YouTube, which will be posted usually a couple days after our show. Uh, so today we have a really interesting uh, guest, uh, Kelly Martins, is uh, telling us about um, uh, uh, the sort of sense of call uh, to go down and serve uh, folks that may not be in the most safe of places. I'll hmm. ask her to kind of pick up on that. Uh, and so this first sort of period was uh, a month or two, a couple of months after reading the uh, program you had. Um, Ken, uh, who came in, yes. Friedman, who came in and spoke to your uh, youth group, and you politely, I'm sure, cornered mm-hmm. him and said, "Hey, <laughs> I got a, I got an opportunity for mm-hmm. you." He took you up on it. Uh, so now, pick up on the story where you you go down for this first time. So how how did you approach uh, the school? How did you approach the principal? How did you? Yeah. How did you approach that to to set it up, and then how were you received? And I just called the school and asked the uh, talk to the coaches. And oh, then, okay. And then I asked them who the principal was, and I said, "Listen, I just I have something I'd like to offer you guys, but I need to talk to you." Okay. So that's when I asked them to go to lunch, and during lunch, I said, "If you can just give us one shot to bring this guy in and see right. if he can get their attention." Now, were they resistant to that? No. They okay. want no because they said they want whatever help they can get. I mean, it, okay, it's, it's a really rough school. Um, do they have very many people offering no. help like this? No. So were they surprised when you showed up and said, "I think they were I, a little." I think, yeah. I, I want to do something for you, what, and I have this idea. Right. You didn't quite know. You thought it was going to be a one-time shot. Perhaps, I thought it was a one-time speaking. shot. I had okay. no desire to go back because I didn't know what I could offer them. Okay. But after 150 kids stayed, they they said you can come every month, and I oh. said, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Uh, let me see. If I have I can a counter somebody. offer, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so you 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 take them to lunch. Uh, they they are pleasantly surprised. No pushback. They don't get much many offers like what you've just given them. Uh, I have this gentleman who comes to, would come to speak. Did they know him prior? No. Okay. So you introduced him. You take him the book. Is that I what you said? Him their book. You He's took him the book, book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they said uh, maybe ten, mm-hmm. ish students. Uh, so you prepare uh, pizza because you're buying pizza. Mm-hmm. This is after school, mm-hmm. uh, and you prepare for how many students? I prepared for fifty. For fifty, and, and then I sent the, the guys out for more. Okay, so then a hundred and fifty stayed after. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what was? Can you describe a little bit about uh, the atmosphere? Were, oh, yeah. were you in the stadium? Were you in a? We were in the Rex, auditorium. The auditor, auditorium. And kind uh, of describe. Staff uh, came to me teary eyed. Okay. They had never seen that many kids stay after for anything. So, what? Wh- how did you, how did you promote this such that that many kids would stay after? Were there, were there flyers? And In, what did you no, say? No, there were the no flyers. flyers we or? just showed up that day. So you just showed up. We just showed up. But the truth is that when somebody gives you a story like his. And tells you there was a way out of that, and right. that they have a choice to make in life, and that choice, his number one choice was Jesus. But how did how did the kids know that this he, guy was going to be speaking? Oh, they just brought them in during the auditorium. They they did them by grades, gotcha. and now we gotcha. couldn't gotcha. mention gotcha. any of the religious part oh, of it okay. during school. So, so there was an auditorium during the course of school. 
Okay, that's that's and, the part of the story. So I they brought like ninth and tenth together, okay. and then eleventh and twelfth. Okay, and of course the story is you know very generic because we can't talk about what sure. his choice was. But right. what he told them was there was hope, and if they really want to know how the hope, where their hope is, come after school, and let's talk about a choice okay. you can make. And okay. one hundred and fifty came to hear. Okay, so this was an auditorium, or rather a, a, an assembly. Uh, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, mm-hmm. during the course of the school day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he presents some part of the story, basically, and says, if you want to hear the rest of the story, then Come meet back. us after. Mm-hmm. And about how many kids go to that school that were in those two There assemblies? are 700 in the school. Okay, so so and about 150 of the true, 700 who heard the initial. Truancy is really high there, so okay. there wasn't, surely not 700 people there, but maybe 500. Okay. So still, you, you've you got just a little less than a third. We were told no more than 10 would come. Wow. That's incredible. There's no PTO. There's no booster club. Okay. There's nothing as far as parent, parental involvement. There's right. not a lot of that. Right. And there's no clubs. Okay. So and, this was their opportunity to have something really good. Okay. Not that they don't have good things, but that, Understood. you know, yeah. So, okay, so the so the assembly happens, part of the story, there is hope, you want to hear what the hope is, uh, meet us afterwards, there'll be pizza, because right. pizza always is always a big draw. Always going to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there'll be pizza, so 150, so describe that. So how long did it go? What was maybe just, part of the message? Uh, were the kids um, uh, respectful? Were oh, they very. attentive? Yes. Well, you know, so to yes. describe it, a little bit about You that. wouldn't so. think these kids came from the second most dangerous neighborhood in the nation. I mean, okay. they, they wanted to hear good news. Right. And they were, they were anxious. You know, they, they listened. And like I said, 100 of them asked to know Jesus that day. Right. Out of 150, which they told us 10 kids would stay after school, period. So, and they were, they were respectful. I mean, we've never had an issue with the kids. Okay. And so, and how, about how long ago... Was this very first? That would uh, will be two years in February. Two years. Uh, so then, so they said, hey, we have a great idea for you. Why don't you come back every month? Yeah, he said, right? come back every month. And you have been? We've been twice a month now. We go twice <laughs> a month for the past year. Past wow. year and a half, we go twice a month. We've started a program for leadership kids, and we have 30 kids that we let come in and be kind of like the school council or whatever. Okay. Um, and we do Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teenagers. Okay. And we do it during lunchtime, so we bring food. We oh, always feed okay. them. Sunnyside's considered a food desert. Okay. So we always make sure we feed feed the kids when we go. And, and yeah, we really haven't talked a little bit about, or haven't talked much at all about uh, about the school district. And I know there's some sensitive things, so mm-hmm. don't obviously don't go into things that would be sensitive with regards to the school right. or any of the individuals. But kind of describe it. So we're we're in uh, you know a bit of a bubble here in right. North Houston. Of course, I I live in the Woodlands. You live in Tomball. Uh, and that can be uh, sort of the, uh, at least the facade of safety, mm-hmm. uh, even though we know there's huge drug problems right. and everything else Just that looks goes nicer. on. It looks nice. Mm-hmm. But describe this area for those of us who might not have ever been down there. Okay. Can you describe a yeah. little bit about the school it's, in the area and so It's forth? just a little bit past 28, down 288 off of Reed Road. Okay. And it's, uh, it's a Sunnyside neighborhood. There's more people on death row from Sunnyside than anywhere else in Texas. It's a food desert. What do you mean, food desert? There's, There's just no, no grocery, restaurants? No grocery stores. Oh, no grocery stores either. No. And okay. the only three fast foods are like KFC and McDonald's. Okay. And so there's not a really big place for them to go get healthy food. Um, most everybody walks. Okay. I mean, you can drive down there. and We pass people walking, the, you know, on the streets all the time. Most of the kids, don't. they don't drive. They all do bus or, you know, bike. Okay. Um, I don't have all my statistics in front of no, me to give fine. you. No, that's fine. But... Yeah. Just general, generalizing. Yeah, that just, just kind of tells you that. Let's, let's juxtapose what we might be used to mm-hmm. in in uh, northern Houston and right. kind of this affluent area that we live in uh, with with that. Because it's hard, you know, when you describe the, the auditorium uh, or the assembly uh, and the need to break it down so there's not just one big assembly because of the potential danger. Right. So you have to break it down into grade levels. I mean, it's really hard, perhaps, for some of us who send our kids to high schools and middle schools right. in this area to, to, to get that in our minds right. of what that would look like. So, um, you know, the first year, last summer was our first summer, we had a couple of kids we took to our church camp. Okay. And one of the 
pastors over there was coming to pick him up from church, our church, from camp. And they had not gotten his car maybe 20 minutes, and one of the girls was calling me crying that they had killed her sister's boyfriend. Oh, no. And 20 minutes later, she called to say, well, they've shot my brother. Two different accounts. Right. But her brother was on life support. Uh-huh. And so that summer, we had six murdered. So, so during the summer f- from the school? Mm-hmm. Or the area. The, the, okay. Mm-hmm. There were six, six murders? murdered. Six and murdered. This summer, I'm not really sure how many, but I know there was two or three at least. Okay. I and mean, it's an ongoing thing. Mm. Oh, and <clears throat> so food desert, um, amenities that we uh, would take yeah. for granted. Uh, there's two or three HEBs, two or three Kroger's, two or three. Nothing there. Uh, I mean, there's just, I can't, I mean, it's just, just got to be uh, uh, heartbreaking uh, to make your way down to, to park to, to go through the assembly. Uh, and so by extension, they probably um, have very little in terms of messaging or support that has anything that would remotely resemble hope. In other words, how am I going to get? So that's why we this? go and do it. We bring a speaker once a month. Okay. Every month we have someone who can come in and share their story that has been through the same type, same similar situation and has made a choice in their life that it was going to be different. Okay. And so that's what we bring them every month. And we have no less than 50 ever come to our assemblies. Okay. So, so now do you do something similar uh, during the course of the day and then the sort we of We do the same thing assembly? we did with Ken Freeman. Okay. And we just change up our speakers. Okay. And they, you know, from being told we'd never have more than 10 to never having less than 50. Wow. It's been, it's, <laughs> That's amazing. It's been a blessing. Yeah. And, and we have a great relationship now. Right. I mean, we go over there all the time. I've been over, I've taken my kids over there. We've gone to church over there. Right. Um, we've hooked up with other nonprofits. Okay. I mean, we are, we want to see Sunnyside come together Okay. for those kids. And I know you have an event tonight. We do. Uh, so we'll, when we come back from the, from the bottom of the hour uh, break, we'll talk a little bit more about just generally the assemblies, uh, what you perhaps have on the planning docket for the next few months, mm-hmm. uh, the, the event this evening I want you to talk a little bit about, uh, and then to start Let's start setting the stage about how people could come and come alongside you and get involved. Great. Uh, So we'll uh, go to break here at the bottom of the hour. We'll be back in just a few minutes uh, to continue our conversation. You're listening to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Relax with a cup of joe or your favorite drink for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce Chamber Chat. The show airs on the first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Join hosts Courtney Galley and Brian Bondi as they chat about the Chamber's events and programs for the month and invite Chamber members into the studio to talk about their upcoming events and businesses. Learn about your Chamber with Chamber Chat every first Tuesday at 11 a.m. Hey, Montgomery County, it's me, C.C. Holmes. And I would personally like to take this time to invite you, that's right, you, to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 7 p.m. where I will bring you the very best, the very best of smooth jazz, classic jazz, and indeed, 
Yes, the soulful sounds of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So come along and get jazzy with me. That's right, jazzy. <laughs> right here, of course, on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongstar.com. And welcome back. You're listening to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. We're broadcasting live from a beautiful, sunny downtown Conroe on 104.5 and 106.1. You can stream us live on IR Lone Star. Uh, also, down, download the app and you can stream us live there. Uh, after the program, in a couple of days, we'll have uh, this program up that you can listen to uh, another time, either through our podcast or through YouTube. Uh, so... Uh, as we've been talking about this uh, wonderful uh, story about uh, the sort of sense of serving others, um, wondering kind of what do I do about it, and then launching into it uh, with probably lots of reservations. <laughs> um, yes. And so, uh, you know, in this segment that uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the good stories that are coming out of it. We talked a little bit about the danger area and the lack, the complete lack uh, that is in that general neighborhood. Uh, and I know you have an event tonight. You want to probably tell some, some folks about. And then eventually, as we work our way through this, uh, the next few minutes, uh, tell us a little bit about how we can come alongside and support you. Uh, anything that we talk about, we'll link to from our Facebook page uh, and make sure that whatever needs that you have, we'll do our very best to, to get you. So, so we picked up on, uh, on the speaker. We, we had this one speaker uh, they came in. They said, hey, we have a wonderful idea. Why don't you come back every month? You're now coming back a couple of times Twice a month. A month. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, flowing out of that, while they predicted that you would have no more than 10, you generally have no fewer than 50. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about uh, some of the impact that you're having and some of the stories that are coming out of Yeah, absolutely. Because this. this is the beautiful part. Yes, this is where when you're laid in bed thinking you're crazy, and a year <laughs> later you realize it works and you don't know Right. How, uh, you know, I've, you hear a lot of people say things, you know, about children or ki people in general that are in trouble a lot, not doing good in school and how they're never going to make anything of their lives or whatever. But I have learned in this experience that if you invest in these kids, they really want structure. Mm -hmm. They really want someone. They're they're kids and they they really do thrive on that. Right. And we have learned we're doing what they said we wouldn't do. We have relationships with these kids. Okay. And we actually had a phone call after Harvey, one of our pl football players, and he said, I need to talk to you about the hurricane. Well, my first thought was he needs something, you know, of course. Right. We had already made several trips down there from one of the senators that had called, and we delivered several items. So I thought oh. this was going to be another call like that. And I said, well, what is it do you need, Keyshawn? And he said, no, I don't need anything. It's just you do so much for our community, we want to give back. So him and uh, wow. I guess there were about maybe 18 of them. The coaches drove them over, and they mudded out houses by my church for like six hours one day. My goodness. And it was proof to me that they have learned by example. And there is hope in these kids. And they just need people to run alongside them and say, hey, you got this. You know, let's, we're going to help you make choices. This is what it's about. And right. We have seen that over and over. I mean, I've had three phone calls this morning from kids from the school. Just, are you coming to the game? Are you coming? Oh, you know, okay. they they thrive okay. on that attention. They right. don't they don't have a lot of that. Right. And so, by by assumption, then they all have your cell phone number. A lot of them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. There there just does seem to be something in us, doesn't it? That uh, knows that there's got to be something better. Uh, Everybody not, wants hope. Everybody wants, everybody uh, has a deep desire uh, to hope uh, that the situation that you're in, regardless of how bad it is or, or its relative badness to other people, you know, something's broken here. You know, something is desperately broken. Uh, and so you're bringing the message of, of hope and redemption uh, to these kids. And now it sounds like that they're I mean, they're living it out. They're accepting it and living it out. We want them to know that just because you live somewhere, you're not a product of that environment. Okay. And I tell them all the time, just because you live here doesn't mean you are that environment. 
and and there's so much negativity on Sunnyside. Every time it's on the news, I think three times this week for murder and kidnapping. Uh-huh. Three times this week, I can tell you it goes on all day. I w- so when they came out to do the mudding, yes, Channel Two yeah, came us, out. Yeah, yeah, Channel Two came out, and we were on the ten o'clock news. The whole story of these kids, and I said, it's time that there's a good story about Sunnyside. Yeah, there's yeah. good kids in this in this area. Yeah, and they are smart. Right. And they have talent. And unfortunately, because there's so much high truancy and the reading level, I don't know what it what it is in the school. I know it's low. And a lot of kids have a hard time making their grades. But when you get to know them, you start understanding why. Okay. And I'm certainly not justifying that they should have, shouldn't have good grades. Sure, I'm just sure, saying sure. when you don't have anyone at home saying, when's your test? Right. Or, have you read today? Right. It's hard enough to get motivated on your own, but as a, as a student, so. Well, we, especially if you don't see a way out, right? I mean, right. Th- how is this going to contribute to me making my life Any better, better or make, get, get my uh, way out of here? They're not seeing that around them. Right, right. So we're hoping that we're bringing people in that have walked that road okay. and have, can say the same thing. And we've had several come in that have walked the same road they're walking and are successful. Okay. And also basing success is it's not that you have to be rich to be successful. Right. That's not your measurement. Right. Um, but I mean, I, I could go on all day about the, what we've learned from these kids. And I say all the time, I don't know that I came here for you for all of y'all. I think God brought me here for me <laughs> uh-huh. because uh-huh. I've learned so much. Okay. Being around those kids. Okay. I mean, uh, tell us, um, so you've been there now a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this may be an unfair question, so you don't have to answer, answer it if you... But some of the kids you've seen now that may have been in the 9th or 10th or 11th grade a couple of years ago, they're now probably 10th, 11th, 12th grade now. Uh, what influence are they having back on, on the freshmen and the sophomores? Is there, they don't come back. We don't, don't. We don't hear from them. But okay. we've only been there with... Um, we were only there for four months the first time okay. before graduation and yeah. then this last year. But we don't... We hear from... I hear from a couple of them... But most of them are still trying to find their way. Okay. I mean, they have jobs, but uh, for the majority of them, they're not, you know, we're working this year on a tutoring program to help implement with the school. Okay. And we're going to help with college enrollment. I think that's super over overwhelming. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I can't imagine I doing it myself. I mean, I'm going to have to seek well, help. Yes. And so <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, as a parent. Of, right. I, of, I mean. Of, 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 uh, in your case, a freshman yes. in high school. I mean, I, uh, I'm overwhelmed junior, myself so. thinking about it. Oh, I have So Correct. I look at these kids and I think, do we How expect you... them to do this really? Right. And we, we offered a scholarship last year. We gave a scholarship. But we would like to uh, incorporate a committee that comes in and says, we want to help these kids get this paperwork. Right. Most of them can go to school free. Right. I mean, like at Lone Star or, or I, I mean, I would think, I mean, considering that a lot of them are foster kids uh-huh. and single income homes, right. we should be able to help get them an education. Right. And, right. and we can talk all day about them defending themselves. But the truth is, until we get them on their feet, we're paying for them anyway. True. So why True. not invest True. in them? Right. And help them become investors. Right. I mean, we can complain all day about what we're paying for people, but until right. we invest in them and help teach them to be an investor, these kids don't want to not be investors. Well, f- of course. I they, mean, just, uh, they just don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I mean, and as you've already said now a number of times, there's nobody there showing them. Right. I mean, the, the, the best they have, perhaps, based on your descriptions and your story, is a, a sort of a hopelessness and a, and a sense of despair and a lack of direction and a lack of... Follow me. Here's how you. Here's the path that you can go on. There are so, a lot of good teachers I'm sure. and a good administrators, but they have their hands full in the school. Right. I mean, they have 800 kids this year, so I mean, there's a lot of good staff in there. We talked to. They have the same vibe we have. That right. want you know, but they can do so much with 800 kids. Wow. And so we've called on the community many times to come in and help us. You know, right. Volunteer. And the uh, community has been fairly responsive, generally speaking. Generally speaking. Okay. Well, and that sort of leads us into a couple of things we wanted to talk about. You have an event tonight. We have. We call it the Green Out Game. Okay. Worthing is green and gold. They're the Colts. And one thing that I feel as I've walked the halls, you know, for a year and a half now, almost two years now, extracurricular is key to anything. And if you don't have your grades, you don't perform. Well, the band's not performing tonight, as I found out this morning, because, well, because the grades. And they've struggled with a band director 
this year, and I've had two band kids call me saying, I still want to come to the game. I mean, but they don't get to perform. Oh. Partly, we donated 20 instruments this year. Okay. We've, um, we've tried to help them get the equipment they need because I feel I'm not a master educator, but uh -huh. I, my personal opinion is yes. extracurricular is key to everything for kids to get them involved. Once we take that away from them, they have no reason to come back to school. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure they have all the supplies they need to be successful. Okay. So we have donated numerous football equipment, pom poms for the pom poms. Girls. I saw that on your yeah pom poms, Facebook uh, feed. Several things for these kids to have the need, what they need to be successful. Okay. But one thing they need is fans. Okay. And so I said, why don't we call it green out, green for Worthing, and we're going to try to fill the stands tonight. Okay. And so that's what we've been pushing for three months. We just want people to show up. Okay. Well, let's, uh, we're going to go for a break. I'm going to hold you over for just a few more minutes on the other side of the break to, to tell us a little bit more about the details and then about what else on the larger scale uh, you're going to need. You're listening to the Good News Program, and on the program today we have Kelly Martins, who is doing a wonderful job uh, at the Sunnyside area, down in the Sunnyside area to school. Uh, and we'll tell you a little bit more about how you can get involved on the other side of the break. We'll talk to you soon. Attention, movie lovers. The Ticket Stub is a new radio show servicing Montgomery County that is meant for you. The Ticket Stub is available live every Thursday at noon on FM 104.5 and 106.1, as well as anytime on IRLoneStar.com. Connor and Dick will let you know what's coming out in the theater, what is worth streaming, and what's going on in the world of film. The Ticket Stub, your home for movie talk. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. And welcome back. Uh, you're listening to the Good News Program. We're broadcasting live on Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 and 106.1. You can also stream live on IR Lone Star or through our app. Um, we're in the studio today with uh, Kelly Martins, and uh, she was just describing, or she has spent a little bit of time with us describing the the story, the sense of, uh, of sort of call that she felt to go and do something. She wasn't quite sure what and had this initial um, uh, presentation with Ken Freeman. Uh, and that initial um, uh, presentation of hope, of, of choice and hope, uh, has led her to almost a sort of two-year uh, ministry with, these, uh, with the folks uh, down there, the ninth through 12th graders. Uh, in um, what has been described, and I think by, by many measures, is the second most dangerous uh, area to live in uh, in Texas. In the nation. In the nation. Uh, and so um, she's been describing to us uh, the change of lives that she's been able to witness as, as a result of her going down and, and the many people who have come alongside her and, and uh, given the, the talks and the speeches and the mentorship and uh and so forth and and so if you're listening to this and you're and you're thinking this is something i'd like to be a part of uh, i'll ask kelly now to kind of talk a little bit about kind of finish up some thoughts on the game tonight kind of where it is and if people would like to come kind of how to how to get there or, or if they need directions maybe if you have a, a facebook or a web something that that you can direct them to uh and then to begin to talk a little bit about the greater need what are some of the other things that you would uh, that you would like to do, but maybe don't have resources? Okay. Some things that you've done before that you'd like to do again, and and kind of pick up on, on kind of those. Okay. Things. 
Yeah, so the game tonight is at Butler Stadium. And I do not have the address on me right now, but it is South Bel Air area. Okay. And it is at 7 o'clock, and they are playing their rival, Wheatley. Um, by chance, my brother happens <laughs> to be the Houston Texans announcer. <laughs> okay. And he has agreed to call the game. Okay. So that's going to make it a lot of fun for those kids. And we just we just hope to bring a crowd out. We're going to give out 500 of the horsepower, okay. hashtag horsepower t-shirts. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who are listening, uh, you can't see it, but if you'll pick up on our on our YouTube recast, uh, you'll see the the wonderful T-shirt that you have on. <laughs> so uh, so uh, those will those will be handed out, or five hundred five hundred of those will be handed, will be handed out. out. We so, bought some footballs to throw out to the crowd tonight, okay, and okay. Um, we just want it to be a fun night. We're, our idea is to bring back school spirit, okay, and community spirit for these kids. And uh, we've asked the players many times, "What does this mean to you?" And we actually have a video of the players we videoed before this on our Facebook page. Okay. And they just said, just to motivate us to have fans in the crowd would be so awesome, you know, because right. they don't have a whole lot of that. Right, right. So that's the idea. Okay, so it looks like I just looked it up. Butler Stadium, <clears throat> is, it, is it on Main Street? Yes. Okay, so the, the address to Butler Stadium, and it's at 7 o'clock tonight, is 13755 Main Street in, in Houston, Texas, 77035. And I'll make a quick note here. Uh, that I will link uh, to Google from Google Maps to our Facebook page, uh, and uh, while we're talking about that, what is? Do you have a specific Facebook page? Our Facebook page is Lighthouse for Students. Okay. And you can like that page, and we have several different you know videos we've done in um, from the school, advertising the game. Um, from last October, we did a little video telling what we do there, and several kids are interviewed. So there's a lot to see on the page if you just go on there. Okay, so and it's Lighthouse for, for Students, students uh, and that's their Facebook page. So I, and I'll also link to it from from our show page. Uh, so if you go to um, a Good News Program on Facebook, you'll see the link to this. So so I'll have a link to to the stadium for tonight, uh, and a link to the page generally, which will get to see a whole bunch of things, including I, I saw just recently the pom poms. Yes. So hopefully the pom poms will will be uh, will be there tonight. So. Um, so then w what else do you, do you have that is upcoming events or needs that you have that we can perhaps okay. come alongside and help you with? So one of our needs is volunteers. And it's not that we need people to come and do anything. We just like to have people there. After school, when we have the kids come after school, we like to have adults for them to talk to. Okay. And so it's not a hard job. It's being willing to sit and let a child talk to you. Okay. And uh, just, you know, have... They have an adult yeah. to speak with. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, if somebody says, you know, I'd love to do that, yeah. how how should they co make contact with They can email me you? directly. Okay. And then I can transfer it over to our volunteer coordinator. Okay. And it would be to Kelly Martins, uh, Kelly Martins at SBC dot, SBCglobal.net. Okay. That's okay. Uh, I know that uh, there's probably a lot of folks that are, are driving by. Uh, so there will be hard for them to write that down. So the, the email address I will also include on our okay. on our Facebook page. Uh, and they'll, they'll be able to uh, contact you directly, and, and you'll be able to communicate with them yes. uh, sort of the, all the sort of stuff they're going to need to know, where, right. who, where, when, uh, and so forth. Uh, so what, um, what are some of the things that you look for? for so an adult says, you know what, I, I feel – I feel like I could be of use here. Okay. So uh, the, what are some of the things that you look for to, to have some of these helpers and volunteers? We really don't look for very much other than a warm body. Okay. We have to make sure they have to pass security. So they will have to fill out um, a volunteer form with HISD. Okay. And that's okay. it. And that's it. I mean, they have to be willing to sit and let, uh, let the kids do the talking. Okay. And interact with kids. That's all you do. And we're there. We're asking about an hour of their time. Okay. So about an hour. And it's once a month. Once a month. Okay. And um, uh, now some people, uh, and, and let me just speak for myself, would say, I have no idea what I'm getting myself mm -hmm. into. And so while I feel like I could help, I might be afraid right. of going down and helping for whatever variety of reasons. Either I'm not equipped, I don't, I, you know, mm -hmm. do, do you, what can you um, offer uh, to encourage people that they actually can do this. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, 
that, that I'm doing any of this is a miracle. I was going to say, I was, I was kind of leading you along to tell you yeah. to remind people about your story. It's just that they were going, what, what can I do? I thought I could do nothing. Yes. And honestly, I, I really can't. God has done all of this. I've just literally been his little puppet. Uh, and, okay. uh, and now I have a great group of people that are on our board and from our church and just great okay. people who run alongside of me willing to, to okay. do this with me. But if you're willing to just hang out, that's all we need. Okay. And, you know, from the other side of things, we, we feed these kids twice a month. Okay. So we're always looking for donations. Okay. Now, and um, you talked about a board. Do you have a formal We have a, yeah, we're a 501c3. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're 501c3. 501 yes. Uh, and that's Lighthouse for Kids, or students. excuse me, Lighthouse for Students is your is your nonprofit? Yes. Okay, so people could go from from your Facebook page if they wanted to make a donation. Yes. They can find you at, at is it, do you also have a website? Uh -huh. It's uh, lighthouseforstudents.org. Dot org. Okay, so it's lighthouseforstudents.org. Uh, you can find them on the Facebook page. So even if you feel like just now you might be not be completely ready to go down and volunteer your time, uh, but you know that there are certain needs that you have, and I'm, I'm sure there are always needs, whether it's pom-poms or, mm -hmm. or uh, musical instruments right. or food right. or well, We sure. feed the staff th three times a month as well. Okay. And, um, and so if, if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, well, I, I can certainly give to support that, right. then they go to Lighthouse for students.org mm -hmm. uh, and they can make their donations. Yes, and, and we have uh, a PayPal account. Okay. Or they can email me and they can mail it however they want to do it. Okay. But okay. The, the money only goes to Worthing. We don't use it for anything else. None of us take a paycheck. None of us, it pays nothing other than stuff at Worthing. Okay. Okay. Wow. What a, <laughs> isn't it amazing what the, what this journey it has uh, been. When, the when you finally say, journey. not finally in your case, in my case, you finally say, yeah, I think I can do this. What a bullet train! Oh yeah, uh, that that you can get on sometimes. I, want, I sit back all the time and think, what what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we only have a, a couple of more uh, moments. We've already covered kind of the the origin uh, of where this all began, what you're doing, um, uh, and what your needs are tonight, seven o'clock at mm -hmm. Butler Stadium. I guess in just the minute or so that we have remaining, what what's uh, what's one of your fondest memories of uh, things that have happened over the last uh, my fondest memory is one of my favorite sweet girls her name is laurel and she with the first time we were there she stood up and said i want to thank y'all for coming and i have it on video mm. and then she called me she asked for my phone number and she called me about a month later and she said miss kelly you're there for me and i said what do you mean and she said i prayed for god to send an army and you showed up wow and she is I mean, she, I just, I just love that girl. Yeah. And what, what, um, what grade is she in now? She's a junior this year. Okay. So you have one more year I with know. her. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. saying, and she wants to be, a, um, she wants to record, she wants to be a record label, basically. Oh, okay. And she, on our web, on our Facebook page, you, she raps, she has a, a poem she rapped. And in the poem, she says, I'm tired of my people dying. I'm tired of my people crying. Mm. And she said, I wrote that because that's what goes on over here. Like, their stories are just like stories you've never heard from anybody else. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe, uh, I know we're, this occurs during uh, school, school hours, uh, but maybe we can, uh, we can have her on uh, Ooh, and uh, come on and uh, maybe <laughs> launch her, her radio career or recording career. So, um, uh, well, this has just been a treat because I think it, uh, it gives people, uh, by your example, uh, people who see extreme need, or even even minor need, uh, that we're we're called to take care of our neighbors, and uh, we are certainly uh, tempted uh, to rest behind the same questions that have been asked since ancient times: Who is my neighbor, mm -hmm. and why should I care? Uh, and I, I think that uh, I think you're a great and wonderful living example. Uh, that we are, in fact, uh, as the Bible says, all in God, made in God's image, and we're to treat others with respect. And I, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we mentioned your son, and he's in my worldviews class, and we took 17 minutes. We took 17 minutes to listen to Dr. Martin Luther King's speech, in its entirety, recorded, in you know, of course, in its original form, 
Uh, and of course, central to that speech is that one day he had a dream that we will all uh, see one another, not by skin color, but rather by the content of their character. And so I'm very grateful that you have come on and told us a little bit about that you're not judging and we shouldn't judge others by skin color, but rather the content of character and you're developing that. And so we're very grateful for all the work you're doing. Thank you. So thanks for coming on. Yes. Uh, we'll go to the uh, the top of the hour break. Again, This we've had Kelly Martins on, and uh, it is her organization is Lighthouse for Students. We'll link to that from our Facebook page. Uh, and it's been uh, it's been great to have, a, have you on. And, Thank you uh, We so look much. forward to hearing, having you on maybe again. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk to you in just a few minutes. Relax with a cup of joe or your favorite drink for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce Chamber Chat. The show airs on the first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Join hosts Courtney Galley and Brian Bondi as they chat about the Chamber's events and programs for the month and invite Chamber members into the studio to talk about their upcoming events and businesses. Learn about your Chamber with Chamber Chat every first Tuesday at 11 a.m. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question, comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Hey guys, I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3, and check out our website, nerdthugradio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Trick or treat, Lone Star Radio listeners. This is Dick, the general manager, taking this quick moment to remind you that Lone Star Community Radio is looking to fill some of our talk show slots along with some of our DJ slots. We have a new show airing on the 10th, Making Connections with Stacey Harris, which will air every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Make sure to check it out along with our other programs on Lone Star Community Radio. For more information on Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. And again, if you're interested in doing something with us, Call the station, 936-647-3776. Thanks for checking out this recording, and I hope you guys enjoy. And welcome back to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. We are broadcasting live from downtown Conroe on 104.5 and 106.1. You also can stream us live on IRLoneStar.com. And uh, certainly you can download also our app and, uh, and podcast. Uh, normally we have our podcast up after the broadcast and the rebroadcast within a couple of days of, uh, of, the bro- of our live broadcast. So you can go on to IRLoneStar.com and, and pull down the app or look at previous shows that we've shown. Uh, we're waiting for our next guest to come into studio, and I think you're really going to uh, to enjoy it. It is uh, the Campbell Trio. They're on their way. Uh, so in just a couple of moments, they'll be live with us. And they are uh, a gospel group uh, who heard uh, our interview with Marquise Taylor. I was going to uh, say, is that how they found out about you? That's how they found out about us. And so uh, if, for those of you who may recall that interview, uh, at, in the aftermath of Harvey uh, Marquise and 
and uh, some of his friends. Uh, Victoria, I think, is uh, is another one of the choir. Uh, felt like that they could go and lift the spirits of the folks that have been in uh, shelters uh, by singing to them. And of course, they made not only the local news, uh, which was just one of a beautiful story to come out of Harvey, but also they made the national news. And some of you may have actually seen them on uh, Jimmy Fallon, among other national uh, programs. And so it was really wonderful to have him on, uh, to hear his response. And his voice was just oh. gorgeous. Just Gorgeous. amazing. So, so Marquise, if you're listening, thank you so much. Uh, but as a result of that, uh, they contacted us and, and had a very similar story. And, and what you'll see here and what you'll hear about is uh, these three uh, teenagers, I think a couple of them now have, are into their early 20s, but, but have launched their, uh, their career in, in recording and their gospel, uh, gospel recordings. And so you're going to hear all about their, their story. Um, in just a couple of minutes, they'll be joining us live. Uh, but but I want to just kind of reflect on what we heard from from Kelly. Uh, I know that so many of us uh, can see see a need. Uh, we can see a need from our neighbors. Just a, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of stay-at-home moms, self-ascribed, uh, that uh, saw a need on uh, River Oaks, and uh, the whole place had flooded, uh, especially the back side of the uh, of the street, and they thought well, there's got to be something we can do. And so they made just a handful of bologna sandwiches. Uh, the, and they took them there, and they realized they needed considerably more than a few bologna sandwiches. They, they ended up taking 3,000 bologna sandwiches. And even now, they're providing tents and camper stoves for people who are still out of their homes. And you think, wow, uh, there's still tremendous need, even though it's bright, beautiful days here in North Houston, uh, there's still people who are living in tents and cooking on camper stoves. And so many times we can, we can read about these stories uh, and think, what, what could I do? What can I offer? Or, or perhaps even on the negative side, there's nothing I can do. And so for listening about stories like Mark Wieston, about Kelly, uh, that, that sometimes in just saying, let me just go and see what the need is, uh, we can we can have such a major impact, and and so many times what I found, because now I have the opportunity through through the show to interact with so many people, is that the that the fear that either I can't do something, uh, or the fear in, in, is that I'm going into a place that I'm unfamiliar, that is not safe, that are full of people who quote unquote aren't like me. Uh, that if we just were obedient and we just were to go and make the minimum of efforts, uh, it would be revealed to us how much more we're going to be capable of doing. As, as we just heard Kelly's story, she went down with just one speaker in mind, with maybe 10 kids, ended up having 150 kids, and now she's been doing it for two years, making a material and substantive um, impact on these kids' lives that have really no hope uh, in their lives. It's nothing but, but negative. And as we even heard that there, that is what's rampant in the neighborhood is, is uh, all of these murders and these, these terrible things that are going on. And, and I can't imagine what fear they must be living in. And, and that somebody from, you know, the, the suburbs uh, could, could look upon that need and say, you know, there's something I can do uh, and then be responsive to it uh, plays such tremendous dividends. Uh, and there are so many stories like that. And, and, and so I will actually put out the, the invitation. Uh, while uh, the radio show, uh, the Good News Program, which you're listening to, I'm, I'm Ted Cox, the, the host, uh, while the show has its origination and just being a respite for a couple of hours, of just talking about ordinary and with ordinary folks that are doing such great work and extraordinary things in the community. There are hundreds and hundreds of these stories of perhaps your story uh, that, that can be told. And in many cases, I have to kind of prod and push a little bit because it seems like the last thing that a lot of the folks who've agreed to come on thus far onto the show and tell their story have been reluctant because they don't see themselves 
uh, as heroes. They don't see themselves as doing anything uh, extraordinary. And, and in many cases, they're actually reluctant to come on and tell the story. But so I, I would encourage if you're listening to this live in, in your car or you're streaming it live uh, and you have a story of your own or a story of a friend or a family member, uh, reach out and, and tell us about it. You can go onto our Facebook page, uh, the Good News Program on, the fa on our Facebook page, and, and contact me and contact the radio show. Uh, we'd love to hear your story, and even more so, uh, we would love to tell your story because uh, I think that the more time we focus on these good stories, these people uh, like you and me who are responsive uh, to the needs of our neighbors, uh, having material impact, uh, the more of these stories we can generate because people will be responding and be and uh, and will be making these changes uh, in people's lives. It's just tremendously uplifting to hear these stories of, of again, ordinary folks doing extraordinary things. Um, so Jake just handed me a, a flyer, so we wanted to make sure that uh, we tell everyone about uh, the Halloween fun. It's coming up. Talk here. about a good story. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I'm just handing it. So you've probably talked about it a couple of times. So I will tell uh, the facts and anything, of course, that I either get wrong or misspeak. Uh, I'm sure Jake, as, as great as he is, will, will correct me. Uh, so this is uh, downtown Conroe's. This is coming up this Saturday uh, afternoon. It's October the 28th. It's hard to believe it's the end of I October. Know. Can you believe it? Of course, I'm glad that Houston finally responded with with weather oh, commensurate yeah. with the date because oh, yeah. about a week ago when it was 93 or 5 or well, something i was like okay seriously yeah and, and summer. last <laughs> night at the for the baseball game and uh, oh, and, and, and at the dodgers yeah. in la i was like blanking dodger on the stadium. city dodger yeah. stadium I, it was 94 at the start of the game like <laughs> those and the houston players were like yeah this is nothing out of the ordinary exactly. for us so. you're like <laughs> you should come and play in houston which they now are so <clears throat> but downtown Conroe is Saturday, uh, October, so this upcoming couple days from now, from uh, 3 to 5. Uh, so this is going to be a trick-or-treat, and it looks like that it's going to be a different uh, storefront. Am, am I right here? Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be the different storefronts down okay. Main Street. And unfortunately, I will report that yes. Lone Star Community Radio is not partaking in this. We had a prior okay. engagement. Sure, sure. So sorry, people of Conroe. But there's still plenty of awesome storefronts to come down and that are partaking in this, and it'll be a blast for the whole family. Yeah, and it, and it says uh, the, the those that are participating uh, in it, it looks like uh, I, I won't read any of the names because I don't want to leave anybody off, but there's looks like that uh, maybe 15, 16, 17 uh, of, the, of the merchants down here in Conroe. Uh, and so if you come down between 3 and 5, uh, Saturday afternoon, October the 28th, uh, you'll look for a black poster. Uh, and if that poster, which is has trick-or-treat right in the center of it, uh, is uh, if you see that in the window, they are participating. And so this looks like a fun, a fun thing for, for the kiddos to come down. It's going to be safe, uh, and they can come down to the store uh, storefronts and get, uh, get candy and other treats. And uh, if so. you took part in or if you participated in the, um, oh, the scavenger hunt that w went oh. on two weeks ago with yeah, yeah. the uh, fair that they put on over here, it's going to be something similar to that. You're not necessarily going to have to hunt for clues or anything. You're yeah. just getting free candy for showing up. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it'll be a similar sort of situation. And if you missed out on that scavenger hunt, I'm telling you, you've got to get down here. You've got to partake <laughs> in this stuff. The city of Conroe is doing wonderful things down here and in incorporating Main Street with yeah. you know people who live off of the lake and, and you know all across Montgomery County. So, Yeah, it seems like a really fun, fun event. I, I, we were just joking, Kelly and I. Since I have one of her kids in my in one of my classes, uh, as our kids get a little bit older, I joked with my my uh, son, and of course we're not going uh, trick or treating. He's he's going to end up gaming with his friends that day. Uh, but uh, it, it, there's a little bit of sadness as a parent mm -hmm. uh, that uh, well, I'm what can I dress up as? But uh, I've got that same dilemma this year <laughs> like, too. I've got a I've got a niece and a nephew, fun. five and three, right. and and they've got their costumes picked out. They're so excited, and it's like. Well, what does a, a you know twenty four year old dress up as for Halloween these days? That's going trick or treating with kids, you know. So it's got to be you know family friendly, right? So I'm a minion this year. Oh, I'm gonna be a minion. Oh, that's cool. Yes, and not a store bought you know cheapy made one. I'm I'm making a homemade nice minions costume. So oh, man. hopefully we'll get a picture of it and we can put it up on the good news. <laughs> yes, for sure. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting to see all of the uh, all of the new costumes that that are out. Some of the ones that are, are scary and uh, some of them uh, highly inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> but it is interesting to see kind of the most popular ones. And it's hard to believe that, uh, w- w- of course, when I was growing up, uh, Star Wars is the is the big was the big thing. And of course, you went as uh, Obi Wan and and uh, and those kind of things. So it's interesting to see that even now you can dress up as Yoda and Darth Vader. Uh, gosh, how long has it been? Forty something years afterwards. So anyway, so come on down uh, to down downtown Conroe, uh, Saturday, October the twenty eighth, between three and five, and look for the posters and come down and have some fun with the kids. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, to break here our, uh, and get our uh, our next guest all wired up and ready to go. Uh, so we will talk to you in just a couple of minutes on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and Youth, and Family and Consumer Sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Don't miss Lone Star Community Radio on TV and YouTube. Our talk show and music shows are featured on Our City TV, Suddenlink Channel 12, and have their own YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to keep up with posted shows and comment on them below the video. And welcome back uh, to the Good News Program. Well, I'm excited to uh, introduce you uh, to uh, to my new my next guests that are in the studio, I think you're going to fall in love with them, especially as you start hearing some of their their music and their story. Uh, this is the uh, Campbell Trio. Of course, we have it's a Campbell duo, maybe today, maybe. <laughs> yes. So they're they're in studio with me as, as well as their mom, uh, who is both mom and manager. Correct. And so so Correct. why don't you uh, just take a couple of minutes and uh, introduce yourself and uh, say hello to uh, to our audience, and then we'll. As we approach the bottom of the hour break, we'll play one of their uh, one of their songs. Uh, I am uh, I guess I can embarrass them a little bit, even though I just met them, that <laughs> I will ask them to sing. Uh, but I also want to not only hear the song, but also the story behind the song. So I know there's there's many things behind it. So why don't why don't you introduce yourself and say hello and then we'll kind of go around. the. OK, sure. I am Cynthia Campbell, the mother of the Campbell Trio, and uh, we're delighted to be here today and. I think we're going to have a great time. Yes. Yeah. Well, good. I think we are, too. So, Anna, or Anna, did I mispronounce it? I'm sorry if I <laughs> mispronounced it. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, Anna, right? Yes. Okay. So, introduce yourself. Say hello. I, hello. I'm Anna Campbell. <laughs> I am 19 years old, and I am a sophomore in college. Wow. Sophomore in college at 19? Mm, yes. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Wow. What nice. school? Well, yeah. I go to HCC. Wow. That's great. Well, I'm Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> I'm Andrew Campbell. I am a senior at Texas Southern University. I'm an author of two poetry books, and yeah. Uh. Okay, now, now with you saying that, mm-hmm. you know good and well. I'm going to ask you, 
to recite one of your poems. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe as I, as he comes out of panic mode uh, at the bottom of the hour, maybe we'll or the bottom break of the hour, uh, maybe we'll we'll get you to uh, yeah. say a few lines. Mm-hmm. Here, so yes. <laughs> so so uh, mom manager Cynthia, uh-huh. yes. <laughs> tell me tell me the story of how uh, how this all got started. So where what is the genesis and the beginning of of the Campbell Trio? Okay, well the beginning of the Campbell Trio. Basically, it all started when they were small. Okay. Um, I'm a singer as well. Oh. And so the whole time while I was carrying them, I sang and okay. I also played my saxophone. So, yeah, music is kind of like in wow. the DNA and singing is kind of like in, in their DNA as well. Yeah. Um, they started singing when they were actually three years old in their Sunshine Band Choir at church. Okay. And so Andrew used to lead all the songs um, when they started singing. Okay. As a group. Uh huh. But he also led songs in the Sunshine Band Choir. Okay. So that helped develop his voice uh, vocally. And as they got older and they started singing as a group, Andrew led all the songs. Okay. And so to keep them on a balance and not having one being favored over the other, I started slowly moving the other into singing lead as well. Uh-huh. And so gotcha. after that, uh, they just kind of started singing and. They got the name the Campbell Trio from their grandmother. Okay. And she goes, okay, they're the Campbells. What about the Campbell Trio? <laughs> okay. And so that's okay. how it kind of went. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is from before before they were born? Well. I mean, in terms of the, in, in, uh, the influence of music. Yes, and, the influence of music, uh, yeah, was before they were born. Wow. Yeah. That's, now, do they... I'm asking them as if they're not even here. So okay. do they play? <laughs> so do they play instruments as well? Well, I mean, the, is there instruments within? Because I've seen a couple of the videos. Well, so, and I only see singing. So <laughs> yes. Well, in our home we do have a piano. Ah. In our home we do have uh, the synthesizer. In our home we do have the drums. Okay. And guitar. Okay. Uh, my son, who is not here with us today, yes. he is the one who kind of plays the piano. I can pick it up really good, and okay. he also plays the guitar, which he picks up really good. Okay. So okay. music is kind of like, again, in their DNA. Okay. Um, we take it for granted, but mm. tambourine beating, yeah, they know how to do that as well. Wow. All three of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, if, uh, I, I tried to sing once, and it was a, it was a joyful noise. It, okay. was a, it was just joyful. Just, just joy. Joyful. Just joy. Just joy. I, mean, joy. I don't know if joyful joy, is the right word. Joy for me. It was excruciating for... Uh, everyone else well. uh, so uh but well i'm i'm excited to i know in just a couple of minutes we'll be going to to the break and so we'll listen to the first part of uh the music so uh and that's just a couple of minutes uh so what's the song that we're going to be hearing uh at the bottom of the hour we're going to be listening to he'll never leave he'll never leave okay and, and your mom uh your man should i call you mom or manager you can call me mom okay so your mom i wasn't sure if we we're here is mom or manager because <laughs> uh, my, my, my wife uh, homeschools, and sometimes she's mom and sometimes she's teacher. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so mom, but always the boss, right? Uh, but, <laughs> always. Yeah. Of course. I, and I don't want that job. Never that job is hard. Moment. So she, she's uh, said, uh, as we were beginning to, to talk with one another, that, that there's always a story. So what's the story uh, with this uh, song? And then we'll listen this, to it as we go to the break. The story behind He'll Never Leave is knowing that God will never leave you no matter what you're going through. And okay. no matter the hardships, no matter the trials and tribulations, God is always there. He will always be there. So okay. that's about that. Okay, good, good. So are we, uh, you want to go ahead and lead us into the bottom of the break with uh, He'll Never Leave? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you're listening to the Good News Show. Uh, we have the Campbell Trio alive and in our studio. Uh, this is one of their songs. Is this the first song or is this well into your your career of writing that, uh, that this song occurs. Is this mm-hmm. one of the it's early in, songs? It's in the career. Right? Okay. So He'll Never Leave by the Campbell Trio. We'll talk to you on the other side of the break. He loves me in the midst of my wrong you see when everybody looks down on me he's always there to protect me yeah in the midst of Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. 
That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Relax with a cup of joe or your favorite drink for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce Chamber Chat. The show airs on the first Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Join hosts Courtney Galley and Brian Bondi as they chat about the Chamber's events and programs for the month and invite Chamber members into the studio to talk about their upcoming events and businesses. Learn about your Chamber with Chamber Chat every first Tuesday at 11 a.m. And welcome back to the Good News Program with Ted Cox. We're broadcasting live from downtown Conroe on 104.5, 106.1. If you're listening to us, you you know that we're coming out with a little bit of a different bump music. Normally, we're playing the 80s, uh, which is the decade (laughs) I grew up in. Uh, And now uh, you're listening to my guests who are in the studio, the Campbell Trio, uh, a a wonderful uh, group that is, uh, is... been developing and singing gospel songs for for quite a while and been influenced for many of their years even before they were born by mom and her saxophone and singing uh and so you're listening to the one of their songs as we're coming uh, out of it i I think i might have talked them into doing something live in just a couple of (laughs) moments uh and we'll uh, we'll see if we can actually talk them into it here in just a couple of moments but so uh andrew so are you had talked about you've got a couple of books on poetry Yes. Uh, would you, uh, are, how does the song, so all of your songs are original. Yes. Uh, and so tell us a little bit about, and, and Anna, please jump in, don't, uh, how does the song development process happen? How, how do you take it from sort of idea to lyrics to music, and then it, it ends mm-hmm. up, for those of us who are not uh, musically inclined at all, <laughs> uh, how, does that, how does that work? How does it work? Well, what happens is I'm inspired through everyday life okay and so a song or lyrics can pop in my head while i'm maybe at the grocery store okay or maybe well everything happens in the shower of course <laughs> but, um, i know i always joke that i get my best thinking done when i'm wet right you know, it's like, and then you're, you're like i can't well then it's gone so you have that to look forward to when you get older <laughs> and it's just um through experiences and um encounters with god and that's where i get my inspiration from okay and so you get this inspiration and you do you uh as a musician uh and a lyricist Mm -hmm. uh, do you hear music first or do you hear words first how does that happens at the same time oh really yeah it happens at the same time exact time when it comes to singing and like you know hearing the music Uh it all happens at the same time and there's never 
a time where you know I just sit there and try to think of what to say because ah. it just happens constantly. Okay. So I could be right here right now. Something could just be flowing through my head. Okay. And if it does, blurt it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, Who knows? That may be the makings of your your next big hit. So right. So so it's it's happening. It's you get some of the lyrics. You get the music. And how do you capture that? Do you have do you? I, you plug I in your iPhone it. and yeah, and, okay. I record it because I don't write lyrics down. Oh. At all. I'd never write anything down. Okay. I record it. And, and then... that can't be frustrating to your brother or sister at all. Right? No, because <laughs> I just play it back and they just listening. And okay. They, that's how they get it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't write anything down. Um, I just play it back and I, you know, learn the parts of what I need to, you know, everything to be composed correctly. Right. And after the process of figuring out what the song is, then I'll go back and write it down or I'll type it up. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so there's this initial burst of inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, and then the hard work begins. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now, so, so, so uh, what's the typical, and it probably is no typical, uh, but what's the typical song? So you have this burst of inspiration, you have the music, you have the lyrics. About how long does it take, generally, from that m initial burst to, you got something that's pretty close to complete? Mm. I mean, is there, is it, is it normally a few days? Is it a week? Is it a couple of hours? Because, you know, I've like a lot of things run through my mind. So you think a song is complete uh -huh. and then something else happens. Okay. And then I would probably say maybe a month. Okay. To get generally it perfect, speaking. generally yeah. speaking, to get it perfect. Of course, I'll be working on different songs. Okay. But for if, it want, if I want it to be precise and perfect, right. I want it to be done right. right. So it'll probably take a month. Because. Okay. All the ideas just flow, and then they flow, and then I'll think of something else, and then it'll just flow, and then it'll all flow just together. Okay. And, and so as a trio, then, uh, how how do you interact? And so, Anna, I don't want don't to leave you out of the conversation. <laughs> We've been kind of talking to uh, to your brother. So how, how does the trio interact? So you, do most of the ideas start with you, or do they come from all three of you, or from mom and different friends and family? How does the... Where do most of the ideas come from? We then, all have. We'll let our, you jump in. We'll have our own input. Okay. But when it comes to like when we come up with songs together, we'll be sitting in a room, or and then we'll just start singing, or one person will start singing, and then somebody else will come in and start singing, and then the other one will come in and start singing, and that's how that process works. And, and and as as brothers and sisters, you guys never fight, right? Always. <laughs> <laughs> So there's no disagreements. It's just harmony from from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right? Oh, Here's... there's a lot of disagreements. Yeah, but we know how to put <laughs> our differences aside when it comes to doing something for God. Okay. Because we don't, we don't do it for ourselves. Yeah, no. We do it for God. Yeah. So, you know, you, you got to say, I apologize for what I said. I apologize for this. I apologize and for that. And that's easy, right? <laughs> 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 and you're the older brother, right? Yes, I am. Okay, see, I'm an older brother of, of three as well, and uh, yeah, that was no good. Mm -mm. That didn't work out very well. But so. you know, and they're quick when you say I'm sorry. They're quick to forgive you too, right? They are. Yeah, okay. They really are. Yeah. It didn't use to be like that, but, yeah. but as we grow older, we realize, right. you know, yeah, they are. Well, well, Anna, I don't, I, Anna, I don't want to uh, sort of monopolize the conversation, so. Uh, tell us, you know, from kind of from your perspective, some of the the, the way the songs uh, come about and, and you, you, how you contribute and kind of take it in, in any direction you'd like to go about what would you like to see the Campbell Trio ultimately? Uh, what do you where do you see the group in a couple of years or so? OK, so the songs come about. They're all your ideas. My ideas. <laughs> yes. OK, so. Um... <laughs> I think it's the things that we go through that allows us to have a testimony. Okay. And make the songs, you know, a good song. And I see the Campbell Trio probably somewhere in London, Germany. Oh, okay. Not not living there because mom won't allow that, right? But you mean t touring there? Touring, yes. Okay. Mom's shaking her you head vigorously <laughs> over here. Das ist nicht gut, yes. So, yes. Um Okay, well, uh, I know that uh, I might have uh, talked you into singing yeah. uh, one of your songs. So why don't, uh, Jake, if it's okay, maybe we can have the song, uh, introduce the song, maybe tell us a little bit about uh, his story behind it, 
Uh, and then as you sing, uh, as you complete that, maybe we can go go to our uh, mid-hour break. <laughs> Okay. So, all right. So here we go. So, so the, the song this that is live. we were talking about right here, that's not the song that we made. Okay. We're going to sing our song. Go do it. Okay. This is it's, a, it's all totally open. open to whatever you'd like to do. It's called Make Me Over. Okay. Okay. Make me over and make me new. Take it out, Lord, things that are not like you. Cleanse my heart, Lord, mold my mind. With your help, I will be fine. Make me over and make me new. Take it out, Lord, things that are not like you. Cleanse my heart, Lord, mold my mind. With your help, I will be fine. Wow, it's beautiful. Well, thank you for uh, for uh, ultimately being talked into it. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, you're listening to the Good News Program on Lone Star Community Radio. We will be right back after the short break. Hey, guys. I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3 and check out our website, nerdthugradio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Hey, Montgomery County, it's me, C.C. Holmes. And I would personally like to take this time to invite you, that's right, you, to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 7 p.m. where I will bring you the very best, the very best of smooth jazz, classic jazz, and indeed, yes, the soulful sounds of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So come along and get jazzy with me, that's right, jazzy, (laughs) right here, of course, on Conroe's 104.5 and 106. 6.1 6.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongstar.com. Don't miss Lone Star Community Radio on TV and YouTube. Our talk show and music shows are featured on Our City TV, Sudden Link Channel 12, and have their own YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to keep up with posted shows and comment on them below the video. Welcome back. You're listening to the Good News Show with uh, Ted Cox. Uh, we are broadcasting live from downtown Conroe on 104.5, 106.1. If you're uh, uh, screaming along 45 in your car and you want to hear more from the Campbell Trio, which is my guest today, and the song that you just heard is Make Me Over, uh, you can continue to stream live uh, on IRLoneStar.com. Um, and, uh, and so we'll pick up the conversation, uh, again with the Campbell trio. Uh, so, um, so mom manager, uh, yes. tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, what the Campbell trio is up to in terms of recording now or, or any shows where we could perhaps see you. And then eventually we want to tell, uh, ask you, uh, if people are listening to your music, how can they get it? Okay. Um, I'll let Andrew tell exactly how they can get the music. Okay. Because it's on okay. all digital media. Okay. Um, 
and it currently it's being played all over the world. Okay. I, as I mentioned before, um, it's being play, played in Canada, of course the U.S., uh, Africa, uh, Germany, France, all over the world. Okay. Um, the other thing about uh, the Campbell Trio, uh, we do plan to do a single this year. Okay. Uh, before the year's over. And on December the 20, no, December the 16th, we are, uh, I'm giving them a concert. Okay. And this time it's going to be a free concert. Before when we had the concert, the very first one, we did charge. This time it's going to be a free concert. Okay. Uh, again, it's the 16th of December. Okay. And I'll give more detail uh, and I'll put it on your, your site yeah. about where the location is going to be. Okay. Um, the other thing you asked. Is the, is the, is the uh, venue already set or are you still yes, working on it? No, venue well, is already tell, set. Go ahead and tell us and we'll, um, we'll link to you and maybe, maybe have you on again in December. So we remind everybody yes. kind of where, where, when and where and those kind of things. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, go ahead and so tell us. So it is going to be, of course, in Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, it's going to be off of Fuqua Way. The zip code is 77045. And um, the address for that location is. Uh, 36, 31 West Fuqueway Street. Okay. And is that what, uh, is that a church? It is a church. Okay. And let me correct something on that. Yeah. The address is 3831 okay. West Fuqueway Street. And it's in Houston, Texas, 77045. Okay. And the church that it's being held at, it's called Word of Faith. Word of Faith. Mm-hmm. All right. And, uh, and again, for, for everybody who's listening or we'll pull up our podcast a little bit later, uh, if you'll go to uh, our Facebook page, uh, the Good News Program on Facebook, uh, I will both link uh, to their website and also put on uh, on our Facebook page uh, the uh, the address, the date, the time, and, and all of those things so that you can get it and not uh, not feel like you have to write it down as you're going you know 65 down 45. Um, so uh, so we'll we'll link to all of that. It's coming up on December the 16th. Will be there the next time. Uh, that you can see them in concert. Uh, so you have a single that you are working on now. Is that yes. something that will be released? Okay. Yes, so it will. tell us about how we can get your your music now, and tell us a little bit about the single that's coming up. You be you can get our music on iTunes, okay. um, iHeartRadio, Spotify. You can get it on the Google Play Store. Um, everywhere, everywhere, um, digital media, everything. Okay. Uh, you can also. Buy your CDs at thecampbelltrio.org. Okay, so if we want a physical CD, we mm-hmm. go to campbelltrio.org. Do you have a Facebook page so, that yeah, we can we follow? We do, um, the Campbell Trio. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for keeping it simple for us. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's simple. Uh, yeah. What you can do is yeah. once you log into their website, which is www.thecampbelltrio.org, yeah. that will link you to their Facebook page. Uh, it is also linked to me. Okay. So. If you have any requests or anything like that, okay. you can instant message us, and then I'll reply back to you. On Facebook? On Facebook. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have uh, a question for the manager slash mom. Yeah, no, please. <laughs> please, that, Jake, come on in. That role, manager slash mom, <laughs> what's the biggest challenge that you've, you've had to face in managing your three children from a performance standpoint as well as a, a mother standpoint? <laughs> Getting them vegetables. to listen. <laughs> <laughs> getting them to listen and trust um, mom and trust and manager trust, yes and trust me you know as they get older they mm-hmm. get wiser oh yeah when they're younger they just do what you say and then now since they're young adults it's like they have their own input uh-huh. and it's like mom doesn't know anything you see like, <laughs> and, and that's the cycle about, yes that's they, the cycle of life you're a hero <laughs> then you're an idiot and then and then you're like Wait a minute, mom and dad aren't so. You know, and it's usually the first rent check or the first mortgage check or the first right and you go. Wait a minute, mom yeah, and I'm dad actually that. know what they're talking about. Exactly. I'm hitting that point right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just moved out of sort of hero to idiot. So I, I'm in my my son. <clears throat> you know, so there's several things you don't talk about around our house. It's DC and Marvel, Mac and PC, because right? <laughs> okay. he's a he's a big gamer, so he loves PC, and of course I have a Mac, and so okay. <clears throat> so I, I can only imagine what what those kind of topics are around the house. Oh yeah, I get that all the time. It's like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm uh-huh. like, oh, okay. Well, how did you get this far? But okay, you know, and, and then it. usually you have that sort of. But I carried you for nine months. Do you have you ever given that speech? <laughs> no. Okay. 
That's a very typical. You listen to me. I brought you into this world. Well, that part I have said. <laughs> that part I have said. It's like, See? okay, I did bring you into this world. Uh-huh. Okay, I do not kind of know what I'm talking and, about here. And every child, especially at 19, 20, say, I will never say that. And then the first time you say that, you, oh, my gosh, I'm my parents. Yes, exactly, exactly. And now a rebuttal from the children exactly. and the talent and performance. Yeah. What is it Cut like the mics having, off. Cut the mics off. What is it like having your mom as your manager? Oh, my god. Horrible. Horrible. We'll edit that out. Too. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's hard to differentiate the, the two sometimes because she's always – mom then she's manager then she's manager then she's mom so it's just you know there's always that momager it doesn't go <laughs> anywhere i like it's that everywhere. that's what you need on your business card momager exactly. yep it doesn't go it. anywhere it's just 24 <laughs> 7. Yeah. um okay well you have the concert coming up you have the single we started to talk a little bit about the single it's a single currently still in development or is it about yes, to, trying to, about to it drop perfect. okay um it's actually called help okay and i'm just gonna say a little bit about it please do um. i love i love the stories <laughs> because again people who have absolutely no musical talent at all are really intrigued because uh, the story behind the music is always to me the most fascinating of how how did it come about so so how did help then come about and maybe we played uh, make me over. So maybe you you both can talk a little bit about what what you know what was the origin and inspiration of that song. So, help, so help was more of like you know some, you can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. So you need help, and I was just asking God for help. I need your help through this, through that, through um through my faith, through my situations, because I'm feeling a little weak. So mm. I need your help. So, okay. I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and we do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he is generous to help, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you've prayed out this, you've you've sung out this now, or continue to sing as as you as you perfect it. Mm -hmm. Now, are you the perfectionist? I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's a miracle that any songs actually uh, yeah. recorded. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, <laughs> so you prayed this. Uh, so tell us maybe, and, and again, I'm not meaning to monopolize mm -hmm. in one place, but so you've prayed this, you, you are singing about it. So tell us maybe about a story where God answered you. Ooh, all of them. Um, <laughs> it was, it was how I, I've never been the one to, cause I don't like asking for money. Well, we're dudes. We, yeah. We don't like asking for anything. <laughs> and so, um, I have bills, believe it or not, What? but <laughs> There was a point in time where I I didn't want to ask like my parents for money because mm. th that's just I just feel like they've done already so much so right. I, I guess it's pride technically but mm -hmm. um, I was like how is this gonna get paid and then boop <laughs> like just like it's like money just started rolling in I knew it was coming from but uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know I it was gonna come in so fast in the large amount of money that came in I was like okay. now this is taken care of I was like. I said, um, cause one of my, one of my poems, a lot of my, well, uh, one of my poems is, it talks about, um, I can't see it right now, but I know it will happen. I, okay. I, I may be paraphrasing it, but right. that's what it talks about. Well, you're the author, so yeah. you, just, you just rewrote it. <laughs> and yeah. And so I couldn't see it at the moment, but I knew that it was going to be taken care of. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so it was taken care of. Hebrews 11, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, we, we are about to, to end some of the time. So I, I suppose uh, as we uh, go into the last just kind of few moments, uh, tell us, so we've got the concert, we've got the new single. Um, what, what's the future for the Campbell Trio? I, t I asked, asked your daughter. So as momager, uh, what, what, do you, what are you guys working on in terms of uh, the future, the next few months, the next couple of years? Where, where, do, you, where do you see yourself going? Well, I really want to take them as far as the eye could see. Okay. And what I, what I mean by that is I want them to, to take them as far as God is allowing me to take them. Mm -hmm. And at this point in my life, I don't see that end of journey. Okay. Uh, I feel like we have, and God has given them a gift, 
And that gift is to be exposed to the world, for them to help the world through song. Okay. Some people preach, some people teach. Sure. Yeah. And so until God tells me that, hey, there is no longer a Campbell Trio, then that's it. But at this point in time, God has not told me that. Okay. Again, I have a journey to take them on, and that journey is until God says, okay. no more Campbell Trio. Um, okay, so you're going to continue to record. Yes, continue uh, to record. Continue to write as inspiration. And exactly. Tour. Tour, okay. and uh, also uh, we're kind of going to branch out a little bit. And um, Anna uh-huh. has a gift. Okay. And uh, we want to kind of expand her gift okay. and maybe do a single with her. Okay. okay. And so all the boys, well, the two of the boys, <laughs> if they want to do the same, they can do it, that as well. Okay. But at the same time, the Campbell Trio will always be the Campbell Trio. And okay. like I said, until God says, hey, no more Campbell Trio. Okay. And okay. so, yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, well, thank you for coming in and, and uh, making the introduction uh, to all of Conroe and the, everybody else who's who's streaming live. Uh, this is this has been the Good News Program. We spent uh, the last couple of hours talking to, to Kelly and to uh, the Campbells here. Um, that um, is just beautiful music. So you can follow them on their Facebook page or the CampbellTrio.org, right? Dot org? Yes. CampbellTrio.org. Uh, be on the lookout as you uh, link to our Facebook page. Uh, coming up December the 16th, you'll be able to see them live in a free concert. Uh, And we wish you guys all the best, and we look forward to having you back on maybe as the concert draws closer. You're listening to the Good News Program. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936 647 3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.